Hello, I'm Francesca Cornaglia. I'm an Associate Professor of Economics at Queen Mary University of London and I'm co-director of the Master in Mental Health Economics. I'm an applied economist and my main focus of research is health economics. Some of the things I've worked on are addictive behaviour, well-being and mental health. But more recently I've been focusing on the socioeconomic inequalities in health and mental health. My approach to thinking about these issues is very interdisciplinary and this is reflected in the nature of the Master in Mental Health Economics. Mental health issues are very common, are disabling and are costly. It affects 18% of the working age adults at any point in time and over a third of adults during the course of a year. It is responsible for more sickness absence than any other illness. Mental health, emotional and psychological problems together account for more disability than all physical health problems put together. It is costly. Mental health problems represent the largest single cost to the NHS, for instance. And once its impact on work, crime and violence has been taken into account, the total cost to society in England alone is approximately £105 billion each year. Keep in mind that mental illness is both an important cause and a consequence of social inequality, violence and unemployment. And this is telling us that the social aspect of mental health is very important both in understanding its impact, but also its root causes and the ways to address it. This last element is key, as medical and other types of treatment for mental health illness can only be partially effective. Why a master in mental health economics? In the last few years, the focus of the economics of mental health delivery has been shifting from psychopharmacological to psychosocial interventions. This means that the skills required to design, implement and evaluate appropriate interventions have broadened in scope and require a deeper understanding of the socioeconomic dimension of mental health issue in the population. In addition to this, as the focus of policymakers and clinicians is shifting, the demand for skilled health economists with a specialization in mental health has increased significantly. The MSc in Mental Health Economics will equip students with the skills required to successfully contribute to this new demand. Among the things you can expect from the MSc in Mental Health Economics is to understand what defines mental health economics as an active and distinct subfield of health economics and gain a critical understanding of the core issues in both to learn how to apply economic theoretical concepts to the analysis of, me of mental health issues, to explore the key policy approaches available to tackle mental health problems. You will also learn to design appropriate interventions linked to these policy approaches and how to implement them, overcoming the challenges involved. Finally, you will learn to evaluate and critique the advantages and disadvantages of both. In summary, the MSc will take you through the theory and practice of understanding and addressing mental health issues from both an economic and a mental health perspective. What makes this master so unique is its true interdisciplinarity. This master, in fact, is a degree that will be delivered as a joint MSc between the School of Economics and Finance and the Center for Psychiatry at the Watson Institute. And the core modules are delivered by these two institutes, as is the dissertation supervision. But some elective modules will also be offered by other schools. An optional module will in fact be provided by the Institute of Population Health Sciences and another by the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science. The module offering makes this MSc a true Queen Mary program, where students can benefit from the synergies that can be generated by the collaboration among four different schools each one with its own strengths. The programme is designed to appeal to students from both an economic background, a mental health background or both. In semester two students in fact can choose elective modules depending on whether they want to focus on health economic analysis training or, for those with an existing background in this area, on advanced quantitative modelling of health data. For the dissertation students will have access to specialist datasets from health services research containing data suitable for further analysis and the supervision will be done by either the School of Economics and Finance or by the Centre for Psychiatry depending on the topic of a dissertation chosen by the student. 
The master is structured in three semesters. In semester one, there are two compulsory modules, mental health in context and economics of mental health. And in semester two, there's one compulsory module, mental health policy evaluation and two electives. The elective choices in semester two are psychological therapies, which focuses on the evidence for different psychological interventions for mental health and their efficacy, or cultural psychology and psychiatry, which provides a cultural framework for the understanding of disorders and symptoms and how to adapt treatment and assessment to be culturally inclusive. The choice between these two is largely a matter of personal preferences from the students. The second elective choice in semester two is between health data analysis, which is an introduction to the practice of analyzing health economic data, and is included for those who likely don't have a background in applied economics, or for those who already have an economic background and would like to enhance their skills further, there's the module Risk and Decision Making for Data Science, which outlines Bayesian approaches to the analysis of risk and causal modeling. This is the full-time program, but there's also the possibility of doing the master over two years on a part-time basis. A variety of assessment methods will be used, including essays, presentation and final exam. The dissertation will count for two modules for a total of 60 credits, roughly a third of the overall grades, and is written during the summer. It is assessed initially by the supervisor and before its final stage by the team of all supervisors. Graduates from the programme will all have a strong grasp of the economic drivers of mental health commissioning and policy as well as the mechanics of delivery of mental health care, including but not limited to psychological therapies and psychopharmacological intervention. Those who select the mental health with health economics pathway are likely to be the students with some existing experience in the healthcare sector. They will also understand the concepts involved in health economic analysis, including cost benefit and cost consequences analysis in the mental health context. They will be well equipped to enhance an existing healthcare career or to begin working as a health economist with a specialization in mental health. Students instead who select the quantitative economic pathway will typically be economics graduates with some existing experience of applied economic analysis. They will receive training in advanced methods of understanding risk and causality using Bayesian approaches in which Queen Mary is an international center of excellence. This pathway should attract and appropriately train students looking to pursue a career in education, data science or academia focusing on mental health. Of course, this is just a broad outline and each candidate will have their own specific pathways and needs in mind. The course leaders and dedicated career support staff will take an active role in assisting career choices and development through personalized supervision, coaching and mentoring activities. The entry requirements are a 2-1 or above at undergraduate level in economics, psychology or a health-related discipline. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I've given you a good background of this new and exciting master's degree. For more information, please have a look at the program's website or get in touch with us, either with me or the co-director, Dr. Mark Friston. Finally, we have a social media presence which you can access by searching for the School of Economics and Finance at Queen Mary University of London. Thanks again and I look forward to hearing from you.